so uh guys hi everybody out there so guys today we are going to be looking at uh, uh two very very important concepts here like x25 and uh, frame really so uh x25 is one of the oldest oldest technologies of uh, one which is wireless area network and then frame really is one of the latest ones so let's go into into the uh into the slide slowly by slowly and uh, i will try as much as possible to make this easier for you to understand so guys as you can see here that x25 uh it was developed in 1976 and uh, up to today several versions have come up so guys um you you have to uh, realize here that before x25 was a private network and later on um later on it was um yeah before it was a private network so when it was published like when it came out many people demanded to use it more right like the public demanded for it but the problem is it was developed like you can see here like the major intention for this was for private use so it couldn't meet the uh, demands of the public and because it could not meet the demands of the public we see that as a result of that frame really had to be designed based on that so here you can see it's a not to not technology widely it is not widely used today uh in comparison to uh, to frame really uh but i would guess that people who want it for private use are still using it but companies and uh and like people are not using it basically like you may need x25 like as an individual it's good for private use um so it operates in three layers that is the physical data link and then the network layer so guys here we have the pad uh it's a packet assembler and disassembler and um you know I, I'm, I'm going to explain to you what it does so this is the uh how the network is set up we have the uh dce and then we have the DTE guys it's very very important for you to understand the architecture of uh, x25 because we are going to uh, see how the architecture of x25 and frame really are different so here we have the uh, DCE which is a data circuit which is going to mean your your modem and then we have the DTE which is going to be either the computer uh, uh, protocol converters um sometimes the dte or the terminal is uh it can be a router so yeah so this is the ne the the x25 network cloud and uh i will explain to you more about what's happening so let's take one step at a time so as you can see here this is the part i was telling you about the packet assembler and disassembler and what this does it it operates in packet mode right and uh, pad is used for packets that do not use packet mode so if if we go back here you will see that since this uh, architecture uses packet mode so anything that is not in packet mode pad helps to convert it you know to make it usable for the network so guys it's as simple as that i don't want to complicate this for you and then if we look at the categories here you're going to see the dte which is a data terminal equipment like i told you we have protocol converters or computers and what these 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 are, are, are in charge of is they convert user user uh, user signals so like like if we go back here um you know they just convert signals you know to be readable by the modem you know so that they can go through the network and um so the dce basically is the modem like i told you and the dce is always uh located is, is always 
are located between is, is always located between the D, DTE like if you look at the uh, diagram here you see DCE you know is in between D, DTE you know so that's what they are trying to talk about and then and then we have the uh, PSC which is the packet switching equipment so guys uh, to to make it simpler for you like uh, the PCE just arranges blocks which are called packets like if you see here uh, in the PowerPoint you see this is a block so when this uh, uh, a packet switching equipment arranges these blocks you know these are called uh, what packets so guys it's as simple as that so those are the three layers that uh, uh, x25 is made up you see it covers the physical layer it covers the data link and the network layer and this goes and this is arranged by uh, the uh, protocol suite x25 protocol suite so guys um so you i want you to take a note of this like that in uh, in the data link layer and in the network layer we have flow control and error control guys that is so so important and multiplexing of virtual circuits happens in a uh, in a uh, network layer so uh, what are the advantages of this uh, x25 you know it well it is well used for noisy uh, noisy transmissions transmission mediums it's one of the oldest technologies we have in wireless area networks you know it's um you know we can use it for research because now we are studying on it and uh, the network protocol performs addressing flow control so here you can also mention the different advantages of the different layers like i explained to you before so if we go here to the disadvantages you're going to see that you see it was developed as a private network and it could not meet the needs of the internet or the public so that's why it you know uh, that's why it flopped basically so and uh, here the main drawback we will see this double overhead because it has um it has a network layer and the internet has a network layer so the job that is done by the internet is also done uh, done into x25 protocol so in that way in that in that same situation we see that this uh the work is um the work is uh done twice like this overdoing of uh, uh of the same thing uh, because the internet does the flow control and error control and then it's repeated again so basically this process slows down um the process of uh, you know a transfer of uh, packets from one place to another so you know like i told you before that uh, you know organizations were disappointed by this method and then they started to use uh, to lease t1 and uh, t3 so in other words they use other technologies because x25 wasn't sufficient for them so it's not simplified if you look at frame really and then uh, it cannot handle busted data that is uh, bandwidth on, on demand you see